My name is Waffles, and I have hit 100 subs. Hitting three digits in subs is always a fun little milestone, and even though most of them probably came from this upload of a highly underrated album that if you have not heard you should check out. This felt like an accomplishment worth celebrating so I decided to do so with a very random worst to best ranking of an IDM artist that, once again, is very underrated and worth your time, Mike Peridinus, particularly of his albums under music. And since this is a special video, my buddy Pancakes will help me with the dialogue on every other placement. Hello, I am Pancakes. I have heard a couple of his other albums under other names, but not all of them and someday I should really fix that. But I have heard these 9 albums and that's what I'll be ranking. I'm not gonna be ranking these since they kinda feel like compilations of his previous sessions for previous albums, these since I wanted to focus on just his albums under his own name for this video, or these since they're EPs. That would've been a long video. Dude's released a lot of music over the past few decades, but maybe this video could be a nice precursor for anyone looking to get into this guy's music but haven't yet. With that said, here's my personal ranking. Number 9. Skirlage, from 2021. I don't think this brand new effort is on the same level of enjoyment as his previous ones, and this one feels less like an album experience and more like a bunch of new tracks, which is always welcome. I definitely appreciate the interesting explorations of some of these tracks, like that video gamey sounding melody on Oxwitch and Penrice or the trap influenced Blaker's Loop. All 9 of these albums have some pretty dang cool moments on them and even though this one just feels like a collection, this is no exception. But with that in mind, I found that this album had more duds than the 8 before it and its pacing isn't the best either. Once I've added the highlights of this album to my playlist, I just don't see enough of a reason to come back to this album or to put it any higher than the very bottom spot. Number 8. Chewed Corners, from 2013. This is arguably his most colorful and melodic album to date. In contrast with some of his previous records, this album is more on the relaxing side of Mike's music simply because it's not as dark. That's not to say it's particularly relaxing, as it can still be intense but in a more fun way than a dramatic one. While seemingly house-inspired, this is also one of his more abstract and weirder albums. Together these tracks make up this album's style to make for a decent enough album experience. I'm never in the mood for it though because it's the guy's most samey sounding project to date. There are a couple of tracks that I think are worth keeping but it mostly sounds like the same idea over and over for me. It's not tedious like Skirlage but it's not really that engaging like everything else. I really have to be in the right mood to get the most out of this one. Number 7. Bilious Paths, from 2003. Sure this is low in the ranking, but this is a solid album experience. It stands out for having some of his hardest hitting cuts to date such as the opener Johnny Maastricht, the intense breaks of Mine Held, and the noisy Grape Nut Beats Part 1. It's also got a great couple of detours such as the odd Siege of Antioch, or the abstract and underrated Mouse Buns. While once again not among his most consistent, this is absolutely worth it for its best moments. Number 6. Dantas Born Abbott's Soulmate Devastation Technique, from 2007. A set of 17 shorter tracks of different variety all combine into one to make this one of the stranger and more explorative albums in this catalogue. From its straightforward IDM cuts like Prong Seamness and something else to its more moody ambient cuts like Eggshell and Strawberry Fields Hotel or its weirder cuts like Cries of the Salmon, this album's strength is its consistent variety. Even though some tracks are more like curiosities or even reminiscent of other tracks on this album, they're pretty solid cuts overall. It may not be quite as consistent as some of his better albums, but what this album lacks is made up for with its interesting variety and original idea for an album. The other albums just happen to give me more than this one does simply because they have even more frequent highlights than this one. Still, this is a very good to great album that I can safely recommend. Number 5. Lunatic Harness, from 1997. You know a discography is good when an album as well known as Lunatic Harness is only in the middle. Now I'm not trying to make any statements or hot takes here. I still love this album. It stands out for its great variety of melodies thrown on top of breaks, a style that has been utilized by other IDM albums from its time, such as Feed Me Weird Things and the Richard D. James album. Sure his contemporaries were doing this to great success, but he definitely wasn't chasing trends, as he had already been utilizing this since his debut. But kinda like the Richard D. James album, I think he succeeded with using these melodies and beats to make these tracks a ton of fun to listen to, but instead of in a goofy way, this album has an impressive control of its mood all the way through. Some tracks like the first two iconic tracks can effectively put me in a happy mood, while others like Approaching Menace and Wannabe are effortlessly unsettling. It's not even that I have a problem with the album that makes me rank this album so seemingly low, I just happen to think that the other four albums are that good. 
this could be a good starting point for anyone looking to get into Mike Paradinus, and I definitely won't be surprised if anyone calls this their favorite. While I do believe he's made better stuff, I recommend this one for anyone looking for more 90s IDM album in general, especially ones that are heavy on the arm and breaks. Number 4. Royal Astronomy, from 1999. This is another one of those weird ones with good variety. Even though these tracks don't seem like they'd fit together on one album, the charm of this album is that they do. You can make the argument that it's a bit of a mess and that it doesn't have the best flow because of it, but I just don't see that as that big of a problem. It's still a cool little one hour journey and it's a great showcase of Mike's versatile style as a result. It has a great bundle of string based tracks and hip hop influenced tracks, and personally, my big favorites were the popular tracks The Fear and Goodbye Goodbye, there isn't a single dud throughout. If you're not convinced you're gonna like this album and you haven't heard it, give it a chance. It might surprise you. Number 3. In Pine Effect, from 1995. So surprise surprise, the first few albums are my favorites from the guy. It's worth noting that the version I'm used to is the US CD version. It does live in the shadows of the two albums before it, but it's still a great set of tracks from his early days. It focuses a little more on the catchy side compared to the last two, including Pine Effect and Green Crumble, but he still dabbles in creating different moods while doing so. This album doesn't really change in style throughout its runtime like many of his releases have done before and since, though his goofy side can still be seen in some spots, especially on Mr. Angry. Even though this isn't one of the most original albums in his catalog and he did go on to change his sound with nearly every album after this one, I put this album so high on the ranking because it stays effectively catchy throughout. The worst moments aside from Mr. Angry are still upbeat, but the best are undeniably some of the most captivating and gratifying moments throughout his entire discography. Number 2. Bluff Limbo, from 1994. This album is memorable for its massive range of moods in its runtime. From the loud and infectious dance 2 to the minimal and melancholic the wheel to the dense percussion on metal thing number 3 to the incredibly melodic twangle friend, I can't think of an electronic album with bigger mood swings than this one. This is a 90 minute journey that can transition from loud and goofy to sad and reverent in just seconds. It's probably the best paced album on this list, varying with both the most catchy and emotional tracks in his catalog, with some even falling under both categories. This album is where the goofy side of Mike Paradinus shines the brightest and that makes it one of the most underrated albums in all of electronic music. The entire thing is engaging from front to back because of its personality alone. I highly recommend this album for any electronic music fans. Number 1. Tango Invective, from 1993. This album may be the longest at two and a half hours and not exactly known to have the biggest variety like within Pine Effect, and I know I've been calling every other album on this list consistent because they are, but despite everything, this album is so consistent it's mind-blowing. I love just about every song on this beast. On top of that, this sound presented by the album became synonymous to Mike Paradinus as seen in the other releases since. This is the album that put him on the map and it really shouldn't be hard to see why. Between the technical and intense Swan Vesta that makes me think of pinball machines to the jolly sounding melody and immersive breaks on Phi 1700 UV to the pleasant noise excursions on Zod 2 to the minimal ISOP, this album takes very little missteps when it had even more of a chance to than two of any other albums on this list combined in my eyes. This is easily one of the best IDM albums of all time and I would argue that its legacy led all the way up to Planet Mew itself. Needless to say, I think this album is legendary and essential listening for any electronic music fan. What did you think of my ranking? What does yours look like? Let me know in the comments. I don't know if I'll be making a ton of these since they're a little time consuming, but I do plan on making one for Tim Hecker once my Mega Collab series with him is done in January and the video will also feature pancakes. I'll see you guys in the next worst to best video. And yes, I do plan on giving this guy a top 25 video later down the line. Anyways, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.